This video is about practical ways to support people with dementia to engage in activities that are purposeful and meaningful to them in social groups such as planned activity groups and at home. Engaging in activities that are purposeful and meaningful to us helps us to feel good about ourselves and supports our well-being. This doesn't change when a person is diagnosed with dementia. There are many opportunities for people with dementia to engage in activities that they find meaningful, both at home and in social groups. To support meaningful engagement, we need to get to know the person behind their dementia. This is what person-centred care is all about. It includes finding out about their life story, their strengths and ways to support individual choice and independence. Montessori is one example of a person-centred approach to engagement and many of the activities you will see in this video are based on this approach. Meaningful engagement encourages people to be creative and to join in activities that stimulate and challenge them. It helps them to remember who they are and what's important to them, as well as giving them a sense of belonging, particularly when activities are shared with other people. That's a very nice shoe. Mm, I think so. What Montessori means to me personally is giving the clients a choice and also giving them their independence and their freedom. Uh, before we did the training, some of the clients used to sit and they used to basically fall asleep and we couldn't comprehend why. Uh, after we did the training, we understood why. And Montessori gave them a choice, gave them a joy, gave them things to do and make them feel good about themselves. To me it was quite amazing because I find that people who do have some cognitive decline haven't necessarily lost the ability of their learnt or their limpid memory, so they're still more than capable of using a sharp knife, using a pair of scissors, using a knife and fork. Just because people do have some memory loss doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't capable of doing lots of the things that they've done all their lives. The project has been terrific, uh, all the changes here at South Haven, um, getting all the clients involved and all the staff has been fantastic. Clients now can do things for themselves and get involved with different activities. We're going to use them in our cooking, so that's why we're planting the herbs today. But how do we know if someone is meaningfully engaged when people with dementia sometimes have difficulty showing their feelings? The ways that people show their engagement vary according to the person and the situation. Laughing and having fun are obvious signs a person is meaningfully engaged. But quietly watching others involved in an activity or helping other people are also signs of meaningful engagement. This is different to the behaviour we might see when people with dementia are not engaged, such as falling asleep, refusing to participate or walking away. So who determines which activities are meaningful and which ones are not? The simple answer is, the person with dementia determines what is meaningful to them. And remember, it's the experience of engagement that's important, not the outcome. Engagement in meaningful activity supports the independence, choice and well-being of people living with dementia. Each person with dementia will engage in activities in their own individual way. It is the person with dementia who determines what is meaningful to them. Think about a time you recently observed a person with dementia engaged in an activity that was meaningful to them. Why do you think they engaged in the activity? How do you know the activity was meaningful to them? Did you observe anything that helped them to be engaged? In what ways do you think the person benefited from the experience? When creating opportunities for people living with dementia to engage in activities that are purposeful and meaningful to them, we need to know about their life story, their interests, what's important to them, what they're proud of, and what makes their day. 
You can learn about a person's life story by talking directly with them. You can talk with their carer and your colleagues. And you can also make your own observations. Is that, that must be um, Sam? Who's Bill McGrath? Your big brother. Ah, your big brother. ah. Carers can provide valuable insights, so speaking with them can help you piece together a person's life story. Questions you might like to ask include, what are the person's interests, both past and present? What leisure activities do they enjoy? What achievements are they proud of? What significant roles have they had throughout their life? What things are likely to trigger negative responses? What comforts them? What do they like to talk about? What's important to them? What makes their day? And what are their goals? How many years were you in the, in the army? In, 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 I, I spent some time in, in Africa, in the desert. Tell me, Alex, do you like looking at the birds here? Oh, yes. There's, there's kookaburras. Yes. There's about five of them. Yes. I can walk around there. There's a little track and up some stairs. And, and you've got your own vegetable garden. That's really... Did, did you enjoy planting vegetables? And... Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, well, I was an electrician. Yes. yes. So what did your work involve then in the factory? Um, wiring. Uh, all of the machines that made the cans. Mm. Wow. So what achievements would Margaret be most proud of? I think the, um, in, I think her work, um, that she kind of, you now doing very well in her work and she was a, a, mess school, a school mess coordinator and also she's in the uh, panel for a school interview, you know, for new staff and things like that. And, and also I think she's um, bringing up her children and see that the children are doing well. I think she's feel happy with that. What type of things make Margaret laugh? I think she, although she's a very quiet person, but she enjoys the company of you know, friends and when they come up, come up to our place for dinner and she, Margaret will always cook a very nice um, dessert. And um, and I think she just enjoyed the um, the feeling that you know she kind of uh, done something nice for the friends. What have you been doing today? Uh, no, I've been outside. Okay, doing the garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah working in the garden. Mm. Is that something that makes you really happy doing the garden? Yeah, when when it's a nice sunny day, I like, I like being outside and working in the garden. Yeah. Whenever you learn something new about a person, it's very important to share this information with everyone who supports the person at home and within the social group. Clyde's involved in the exercise program, so we generally go for a walk. Do you enjoy the exercise? Yeah, yes, do. yeah. Because at Gravillia, we do the weights as well. Do you enjoy the weights? Yes, yeah. They're not massive weights, but I think you would do probably two or three kilos. Yes, yeah. And we have a set of, set of exercises oh, in the walking. I'm mm. things. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this team approach between the person with dementia, carers and staff helps to provide a positive emotional environment that encourages engagement. Knowing the person behind the dementia is necessary for supporting engagement in purposeful activity. Knowing key aspects of the person's life story can help you develop interesting and meaningful opportunities for engagement. The person living with dementia, their carers and friends can help you find out about the person's life story. A team approach to sharing key information about life stories is important. How is information about life stories shared? Consider everyone, including the person with dementia, carers and staff. What do you do to encourage people to share this information? What aspects of privacy and confidentiality need to be considered?
So often we hear about all the things people living with dementia can't do. But if we take a little time to find out, we might be quite surprised to learn what they can do. As dementia progresses, the memory a person has for routines, habits and skills such as reading tends to be retained for a longer period of time. This area of memory is known as procedural memory. On the other hand, declarative memory refers to memories of recent events, facts and where things are. This area of memory tends to be damaged earlier in dementia. The challenge is to provide opportunities for engagement in activities at home and in social groups that use and maintain the strength a person has while providing support for memory that is more impaired. Personal strengths can be grouped into four main areas – motor skills, sensory skills, social skills and cognitive skills. Motor strengths What strengths does the person have to use tools? To scoop, to pour, stir and carry things. Sensory strengths What abilities does the person have to enjoy activities using their hearing, such as listening to music? Their vision, such as looking at family photographs? Their touch, for example, feeling and enjoying different textures and surfaces. Their taste, enjoying and identifying different flavours. And their smell, for example, identifying and enjoying different aromas. Social strengths. What strengths does a person have in making conversation, using humour, giving opinions, listening or leading a group? Cognitive or thinking strengths. What strengths does the person have to read aloud, to understand what they have read, to match, sort, count and use templates? That looks like the pink, that belongs with that one by the look of it. Mm. Thanks Barbara. When you're identifying a person's strengths, it's important to use an approach that ensures the person doesn't feel they're being tested or put under any pressure. For example, with reading, which is a strength that people commonly retain for a long time, there's a simple way you can identify if a person can read single words or sentences, what size the print needs to be, and whether they understand what they are reading. I'm putting some signs together, so I was trying to figure out what um, print size I would like to choose. Would you like to help me with that? Oh, I could do, yeah. Yeah, sure. Can you, we go to my office and I'll show you, yeah, we'll choose from there. Here's the options, Barbara, would you please start um, reading from the top oh, so yeah. we can work out which which um, the best option. Mm, I am fine, how are you? What a nice day. Live, laugh and learn. And, mm, strike and the... No, smile and the world smiles with you. That shows you how small it is. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'd pick the top, one of the top three, not the... the when you get down to tried and true, it's, a bit, it's mm. beginning to get a little bit small. Yeah. Okay, Barbara, thank you. That was um, great. Thank you for helping me. That's all right. Once you have determined reading ability, you can use this information to start planning individual and shared activities. A reading group can be an enjoyable activity for some people, but you need to know if each person can take turns and contribute to the group. Alex, would you like to continue reading from early commemorations at the top of this page? Yeah, you happy to read that for us? Yes, another newspaper headline dubbed in Knights of Gipperley. Information about a person's skills can usually be gathered by simple observation. And often, more than one skill can be observed at the same time because all these skills, sensory, motor, social and cognitive interact with each other. For example, morning tea offers a great opportunity to observe both motor and social skills. Can the person socialise? Can they carry things and serve others? This information helps us to identify meaningful roles that a person can undertake in the group or at home. Shirley, would you mind to help me ask whether our friend would like to have coffee or tea and I will make it. I'll do that. Okay. Coffee. Coffee. Hold it there. 
Okay, here we go. Thank you. I often will ask clients to help me with serving the tea or coffee because a particular like Shelly, she enjoys doing this, helping and in the same time have some conversation with the, we call friend here, he knows because this is a regular group and he particularly like to help. For example, the gentleman over there not quite sure. She will spend some time talking and make sure he's all right. I enjoy helping with the morning tea. It's a pleasant thing to do. Developing personalised activities that use a person's strengths can help them maintain skills and independence, and their self-esteem and well-being is supported when they engage in activities where they are likely to succeed. Consider what the person with dementia can do, rather than what they can no longer do. There are different types of strengths, sensory, motor, social and cognitive. Knowing about strengths helps us to create activities that will be successful for people living with dementia. What are some of the ways you can discover and learn about the strengths and abilities of a person with dementia? What are some of the things that have surprised you and what a person with dementia can still do? How might you use knowledge about a person's abilities to create meaningful individual activities or activities that are shared with others in the social group? A person's declarative memory, the memory we have for facts, events, finding our way and putting things in order, is often damaged earlier in dementia. But there are many ways we can modify both the physical and emotional environments at home and in social groups to support a person with dementia to stay independent for longer and to engage in meaningful activity. In the physical environment, make sure you have good lighting. Eliminate unnecessary noise. Use contrasting colours to help people perceive different surfaces and spot boundaries. Clear signage can reduce confusion and anxiety about what day it is, what's happening today, and where important things are located. The emotional environment is also important to people with dementia. Positive relationships and a warm, relaxed environment are important for supporting meaningful engagement. We also need to know how to support each person with any health issues that might affect their engagement. For example, we need to understand the impact of their dementia and any support they need with their vision, hearing, pain, tiredness or mobility. A supportive physical and emotional environment encourages engagement. Be aware that a person's support needs change over time, so always stay on the lookout for new ways to support a person as their dementia progresses. Yeah. Robimy, robimy, aż się ta śmietanka ukręci. Tak, o, troszeczkę. A supportive environment is necessary to encourage people with dementia to engage in activities that are meaningful to them. The environment includes both physical surroundings and the relationship between everyone involved in supporting the person with dementia. Carers, staff, friends, volunteers and others. The environment can support independence, decision-making, function and memory. What changes could you make to the physical environment to encourage engagement in meaningful activities? How can all people involved work together to create a supportive emotional environment that encourages engagement? How can all people involved work together to share experiences, achievements and goals at home and in the social group. Once we've learned about a person's life story, their strengths and the ways they need support, we can use that knowledge to create meaningful activities that are tailored to their specific needs and interests. At home, there are opportunities to create activities that the person can do both on their own and with others. 
In social groups, it's important to develop smaller group activities based on the interests that people share. Mamy tu troszeczkę. Tu, tu, tu. Dobre. Jeszcze. Offering a variety of activities supports the independence and decision making skills of people living with dementia. Everyday tasks such as setting the table, preparing morning tea, and cleaning up after a meal, or hanging up clothes are all activities too. Intergenerational activities provide wonderful opportunities for people with dementia to engage in meaningful activities. Listening to young children read, storytelling, and sharing skills are ways of spending meaningful time together. Think about ways your social group could partner with a local school or play group to create opportunities for sharing activities with younger members of the community. Uh, the benefits for our children are that they get the opportunity to work with others out of the school and understand that their learning is not just about the, what happens in their four walls of their classroom and that they've got to learn from many people and from many generations. And of course we hope that the benefits for our friends from Grevillea are that they feel that they are contributing to children's learning because they complete spelling activities and maths and they have games and they, and they have a lot of fun. At home, think about ways your loved one can share activities with younger people. This one's going to be easy, okay. you can do this one. I can do it. Now you show me because okay. your fingers are smaller than mine. You can do it. See, so you can do it easy. Working on projects for particular charities or events can also provide opportunities for purposeful engagement. In planned activity groups, there are many roles or tasks that people with dementia can do on a regular basis. There might be some surprises for you. I'm going to get Barbara, that lovely lady there, uh, to pass on the name tag. And the idea of the name tag is to actually have an open communication between clients. There we are. Come on, gorgeous! <laughs> you mean you're going to pin the dog for me? Having a meaningful role can help people to feel they are doing something worthwhile. Roles also give people an opportunity to use their skills. However, it's important to know that the person has the ability to carry out the role before inviting them to do so. People with dementia can also have meaningful roles as leaders within the group. Now, what kind of relationship do you think that is going on between them? The first time she's going to dance. This is the first time she's going dancing. Okay. With a gentleman. With this gentleman. Okay. So this could be a sergeant or whatever. The, I need the two certainly. Okay. A number of bands yes. And, yes. And think. How old do you think she is? What do you think, Vince? How old she is? Marianne, it's an old picture and it's in the past. Robert, in the 50s. We work with his uh, uh, fingers to exercise and uh, make uh, him stronger and uh, try to grip the small item and squeeze. I had a bit of an issue with staff coming on board in the beginning, but they've all now accepted and really enjoy doing it with all the clients. They see that the clients can do things for themselves, whereas before the staff were doing things for them, and they now know that it's beneficial to, to let the clients do things for themselves individually, get some enjoyment out of helping and helping other clients as well. So some of the biggest challenges for the staff have been allowing the people to, I've actually had to ask the staff to stop and reflect on what they're doing and why they're doing it and can the client actually do that themselves and, and if we have to keep that reflection ongoing almost weekly because it's very easy for people and it's easier for staff to fall back and make the tea and the coffee, take away the dirty dishes, you know, have everybody in a group, everybody participating in the same thing. So now we even have clients who make suggestions. So I suggested, I said, why don't you have a, a dance? Music livens people up. But 
that's how I'd started by me bringing that here with an Elvis Presley week and I'll bring it now every so often. Use knowledge of each person to create activities that reflect their interests and strengths. Identify interests and strengths that people have in common to create shared activities. Meaningful roles support self-esteem, identity and purpose. What interests are shared by people within your social group? How might you use knowledge about shared interests to develop shared activities? What roles can be undertaken by the person with dementia within the social group and at home? What opportunities can you create for a person living with dementia to engage in activities with children or younger people? How can you work together to achieve goals that are important to the person with dementia? The ways in which activities are presented can affect a person's ability to engage. By knowing a person, you can decide how to present or modify activities to better support them. You saw me and now it's your turn, okay? Pan będzie teraz to robił. Proszę mi pan usiądzie. Teraz to nie, nie, nie. Pani Adamie, tą rączką. I to. That's the way. Yeah, very well, very well, very well, very well. <laughs> There are some important things to consider when presenting activities. For example, remove any distractions including clutter and unnecessary noise from the immediate area. Have all the required items in one place and close at hand. Where possible, establish boundaries for the activity. Invite the person to join in the activity. Would you like to help me? Break tasks into smaller steps. Use a template if required. Demonstrate how to do the activity. Look at me, look at me. Yes. Look at me. Um, well, I'm okay. okay. Give the person something to hold. Thank the person for their help. Ask if they enjoyed it and if they would like to do it again sometime. Thanks, Clyde. Some people worry about us using the sharp knives in the kitchen, but it's, we think it's just part of everyday life yeah. and everybody has used the sharp knives in their own kitchen at home. In the beginning of the project we were a bit concerned about some of our issues with food handling, infection control, falls, um, but we've been able to alleviate that by following all regulations. Everybody washes their hands before they help out in the kitchen and then puts a pair of gloves on. Explaining to the staff that every day is a risk in life um, when we get out of bed, when we cross the road and that is no different for our clients and of course minimising those risks. So we look at the areas here, we have rails and all that sort of thing. So we encourage the staff to look at it like that, that every day is a risk for everybody and took some doing <laughs> and um, the change has been incredible. Um, even you see people here dancing now with walking sticks and touching their toes. <laughs> Six months ago that never would have happened, not in a million years. <laughs> When presenting activities, it's important to provide choices so people can independently select the activity they prefer. Different activities can be offered at the same time. Inviting a person to engage in activities and thanking them afterwards supports choice and independence. People with dementia can engage in activities in different ways and at different levels. Activity stations offer opportunities for people to independently engage in activities. What challenges might you experience supporting a person living with dementia to maintain interest in a shared activity? How might you respond? Provide an example of a task or activity you can break down into smaller steps. How might you present activities in a way that encourages choice and autonomy for a person living with dementia? 
What are examples of activity stations you might create within your home or social group? Throughout this video, you've learned that engagement in purposeful and meaningful activity is important to all of us. And this doesn't change when a person is diagnosed with dementia. Participating in meaningful activities helps us to feel good about ourselves, supports well-being and independence, and gives purpose to our lives. Now our clients come and they come because they've, they feel like they're involved, their independence has increased, um, they feel like they have a role to play here, they feel like they're part of a community, organisation, um, friendship has been huge, uh, and, and watching people blossom being given independence, being allowed, for want of a better word, to, to try new things, to try things that might be perceived as dangerous. You've also learnt that when the person with dementia, their carers and staff work together, they will discover many ways to support engagement at home and in social groups. Each person living with dementia is unique. As we get to know and understand each person behind the dementia, Together, we can create opportunities for engagement that encourage feelings of achievement and self-worth, support connections with others, and give purpose to everyday life. One thing I've learned from and decided that will always stay with me and actually encourage me constantly day to day to keep going is the fact they may not remember what they did, but they remember the feeling behind it. And that's really, really important for us carers to maintain that, to keep us going and encourage us to keep going. So it's, I've been very privileged actually to be part of the training and we hope we could maintain it and for others to give it a go.